Um, thanks to everyone for coming. Sorry, I missed the earlier sessions, but I'll try to check out people's slides. Um, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about the recent work my group has been doing using Parcel to do some different kinds of molecular dynamic simulations of molecules. And I, uh, from the first talk, I realized I, I put my contact info at the bottom here. So if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. Um, and I'll also mention that I have some um, collaborations going on with um, Mike Wild and people at Parallel Works that's related, but not necessarily the same as this, just to let you know. Um, so I want to thank my group and I now have several people in the group using Parcel for different projects and hopefully we'll keep expanding that. So that includes some people who are probably here, Wilmore, Daniela, oh sorry, I mean Wilmore, oops. sorry, Wilmore is here, if you can see my mouse, Daniela and Kangshin, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Kangshin's been doing. So since I don't think there were earlier talks about this, I'll just remind you if you haven't seen it before recently what molecular dynamic simulations are. And so the simple idea is that we want to solve Newton's equations for a collection of atoms that are in molecules. And so this is like an example picture of a molecule that we're going to study called alanine bipeptide. And each one of these little central, the center of these bonds are atoms like nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. And then they have bonds that hold them together and charges and things. And the way that we get the forces for Newton's equation is we build some force field, which is just a rule for how these things should bump into each other. And so each one of these little circles has like a mass and a charge and some, like they can't overlap with each other. And we have bonds that are um, springs and some kind of fake bonds that enforce bending. And then you can represent basically the behavior of this molecule. So just to orient you, quickly. This is a molecule called alanine dipeptide, which is the smallest um, and simplest peptide, which is the foundation of a protein. And this person, uh, Ramachandran, figured out that if you uh, have these two angles here that you can rotate parts of the molecule around, then you get an energy surface that looks like this, which says that it would like to be in these like kind of low energy um, places here. And so this is a standard benchmark problem for seeing if we can do things correctly. Uh, the other thing we do in simulations is this would be like uh, if all the molecules were just sitting in a, a vacuum, this is what would happen. But in reality, the molecules are in solution and they bump into stuff. And that what happens is it makes it so that each molecular structure uh, that we would observe has probability of appearing that is related to the exponential of its energy. So that's called the Boltzmann distribution. And when we do molecular dynamic simulations or Monte Carlo simulations, some people here may have done those, then we're sampling from this statistical distribution. Okay, so one code to do that is LAMPS. And uh, so it's a general purpose simulation engine from Sandia National Lab. And you can do almost any kind of MD simulation in LAMPS. And it happens to have a Python interface I'll mention later. Another code that we use is called Plumed, which is a plugin package for many MD codes, including LAMPS. And so with Plumed, what we could do is we can analyze these molecular structures, like say we want to calculate these angles, we can define them as phi and psi, and then we can print them out from our simulation. And if we want to force them to do something, then there's various things like we can apply a um, a bias on a particular position of these angles by just adding one line here. So that's what we're going to be doing. And so we're going to be doing something, uh, well this is actually a previous slide from last year, doing umbrella sampling, uh, which I did with Parallel Works. So that's a way of calculating the free energies of this molecule. And so what we did at that time is we made up um, a bash app which uses a docker container of lamps with, with plumes. And so if you just run a simulation of that, what you get is the molecule will stay in these low energy spots. And the point of doing these fancier methods that I'm going to tell you about, such as what's called umbrella sampling, is to, to observe what the free energy or the sort of the energy of the molecules in all of these, in this whole map. So for example, what we can do in umbrella sampling is force the molecule to be where this circle is and then sample there and then move this circle around and sample at different locations. 
so like this. And the way we do that in Parcel is we just have a really simple loop where we pull the molecule to be in a particular location. So we have a Parcel app that runs with a certain plume file that pulls it into that circle and another one that runs the simulation while it's in that circle. And those can all run independently. And then we analyze it and we get a much prettier energy map that looks like this afterwards. So this would be like, I don't know, 2000 semi-independent simulations. What we're doing now is developing a new method based on this PRL from last year. Uh, just tell you about it because it's kind of fun. This is what Kangshin is working on. So the idea that I just told you is um, if we run a simulation at room temperature, which is like 300 Kelvin, then we can imagine our particle is on some energy map like before. It will just um, jiggle around in the minima and we want it to see these other minima. So what uh, was proposed in this paper is a new method where we run many simulations at high temperature like this, where the thing can bounce around above the high energies. And then what we have to do is something called quenching, a special way of basically doing an energy minimization. So we uh, do that by with a, um, a Python app in Parcel, which uses the Python interface from LAMPS so that we can extract the energies while this is happening. And what happens is the energy goes down and the molecule falls into some minimum. We do that a bunch of times and then we calculate this formula. And <clears throat> uh, we set up a cool way of doing that where we have the, those three steps as different Python scripts that all read from one input file. So in this input file, we have the different parameters that kind of define our workflow. And then when you run these three steps, the output is a map like this compared to this reference. And um, what was interesting here is we get kind of the correct answer so far, we kind of get the correct answer for the low energy regions, but not necessarily everywhere, partly because we need the top high energy part to cover everything evenly. And so now what we're doing, which I'll show on the next slide, is combining these two approaches, the umbrella sampling that I told you before, and this thing where we run at high temperature and quench. And so to conclude or wrap up, um, we were able, easily able to do parallel execution of different MD simulations using LAMPS and in the new one using the LAMPS Python interface and get back information. Um, we could rapidly prototype these sort of standard uh, free energy methods or and this new quench method. We implemented this even more complicated method, which is where we combine the umbrella sampling and the quenching, and then we get this nice result that's hot off the presses. And in the future, what we kind of need to work on uh, and would like to work more on is kind of um, better debugging tools. So we know when the actual MD simulation fails that somehow propagates back out to us and we can kind of tell the difference between like the MD simulation failing or a memory error or some cluster error. That would be something to think about um, for more partly from our side, but if working on input outputs and staging, which everyone I think has thought a lot about, um, but kind of having a good paradigm for that um, that's standardized, we'd be happy to talk to you more about that. And then um, something we could work on is more like containerizing these apps like I did um, in the old version with Parallel Works so that we can run on different architectures, um, you know, in a cross-platform way. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Glenda. I think you've done a really great job in that talk of explaining like domain specific stuff in a way that non experts can understand. So I really appreciate that. Sometimes uh, it can be easy to just jump into to your stuff. So thank you. So um, let's open it up to questions. Does anybody? Uh, there, have any there's a question in the chat, which is a good question um, about this is a domain specific question, but what like can you really run at these high temperatures, high temperature? uh similar in this paper this paper actually might be more interesting to uh, many of these crowds than what i'm working on which is uh oh you can't see it anymore um the uh this paper is a machine learning paper and so high temperature means um something related to like when you do annealing to find the weights of things in a neural network or something that's what high temperature means and so there's no problem but for our molecules, there is a problem going to really high temperature. And it's totally fine for alanine dipeptide, but it, 
may not work for uh, real systems. So in some ways, this is a, um, a method that's just for fun. But in other ways, what I could imagine is that the, this is the reason that I suggested we combine it with umbrella sampling, like in this final slide. Oops, went away. Uh, when we combine these two methods, maybe we can do sort of um, a regular high temperature, like 600 Kelvin that gets us over small barriers and use umbrella sampling to get us over big barriers. And when we combine those, then hopefully that will give good results. All right, well, uh, this is really exciting work. I think we're, we're at our time limit, so we'll probably cut the questions off there, but uh, hopefully we can take it offline if there's more follow-up. And thanks so much, Glenn.